hydrocarbon-fueled inferno that would become synonymous with the worst-case scenario for an offshore oil platform. The platform's name was Piper Alpha. The magnitude of this disaster was a significant event in human history, and indeed, the history of the North Sea after it will be forever different because of its occurrence. It was also the greatest loss of lives on an oil or gas platform. 167 men perished, victims of a tragic confluence of design flaw, human error, and bad luck. Oil was discovered under the cold, rough North Sea in 1969. Occidental Petroleum, one of the first companies to claim the North Sea fields, knew that to succeed, it would have to think big. The result was the Piper Alpha. This was the first a platform of this type and scale in the North Sea. It cost one billion dollars in 1975 dollars. So this was a significant engineering platform. The challenges of building a whole processing refinery that sits on the seabed of the North Sea is particularly challenging. It weighed 30,000 tons. Its lowest level rose 84 feet above the water to account for the North Sea's giant waves. The Piper was a mini city, home to over 200 men who lived and worked on the platform for weeks at a time. 35 gas and oil wells fed into separation modules. A maze of pipes, tanks, pumps and valves which separated the oil from the natural gas and water. The oil was shipped to shore in a 128-mile pipeline. Processing the gas was more complicated. The gas that came out of the formation under the Piper Alpha wasn't just methane, which is a very light hydrocarbon gas. It also contained propane, pentane, which are heavy hydrocarbon gases. The lighter gas was sent to processing platforms connected to the Piper. The heavier gases were condensed into liquid by applying high pressure and low temperatures. The liquid gas, or condensate, was then piped to shore, conveniently alongside the oil. Keeping the heavy gases in liquid form required the use of powerful pressurizers, called condensate pumps. On July 6, 1988, a failed valve on a condensate pump would trigger a disaster of extraordinary scale. It began with routine maintenance. There were several hundred valves on the platform. Each of these had to be checked at least once every 18 months, according to their technical safety requirements. One of the valves on one of the condensate pumps was off for recertification. While the valve on condensate line A was down for repairs, the redundant line B remained active. But there was a problem with line B. Hydrates were forming at a high rate. Hydrate, which occurs in processing oil coming out of the ground, is nothing more than ice with a little hydrocarbon in it. However, if you think ice is an irritant in your house plumbing, you ought to see it form in a hydro processing line. It can totally stop the process. The methanol injection system, which essentially puts antifreeze into the line, had failed. Line B shut down automatically. This is very bad. <laughs> First of all, it has grave economic consequences, but if you have to shut the platform down and go from what they call a black start, that means bring everything start from cold, that is a real headache. It was necessary to find something to do real quick to either get that pump back in service or to start the other pump. So they sent an electrician down to check the instrumentation. This particular safety valve was in an awkward position because it was located well above the pump that it protected. He could not see the safety valve from the position where he worked on the pump. He went back up and said that it was okay. Due to the pump's design and a lack of communication, the night crew didn't realize the extent to which line A had been disabled. When the line A pump was repressurized, gas at 1100 PSI shot out of the valve with a deafening shriek. So eventually this layer of condensate gas 
which now, of course, has become mixed with oxygen and is only looking for a ignition source, finds the ignition source. What that source was may never be known. But at 10 o'clock, a giant fireball ripped through the condenser module and destroyed the control room. The initial explosion, if that's all that would have happened, we probably would have been okay. But unfortunately, the initial explosion appears to have fractured the main oil line in the B module. And that contributed a, a large amount of, of fuel to the fire. Uh, oil, crude oil, happens to burn with a very thick black smoke. And that dense smoke basically rendered that entire deck uninhabitable very quickly. With the smoke making helicopter evacuation impossible, workers trapped above the burning production module had no good way to escape. So you've got to find your way in dense, dark clouds of black smoke in the middle of the night, find a rope, and crawl 10 stories down and drop into 40 degree water and survive. The oil fire grew so hot that a major gas pipeline exploded. The Piper Alpha's unmatched ability to collect and process prodigious amounts of hydrocarbon fuel now led to its rapid demise. These pressurized pipelines represent huge fuel sources that when they come back literally melt the 30,000 tons of the Piper right to the waterline. Of the 226 people aboard the Piper Alpha, only 61 survived. 165 workers and two rescuers died. The financial impact on Britain's oil industry was staggering. The Piper Alpha disaster still, I believe, retains the title of the most expensive man-made disaster in history. The year before the Piper Alpha disaster, I believe the British government took in 12.5 billion pounds in oil taxation revenue and in 88 89 it was only 3.6 billion after tracing the source of the fire to the failed valve engineers focused on how the piper's design flaws may have contributed to the fire's extreme severity among the failures inadequate blast walls protecting the control room the lack of alternative ways to shut off gas lines or activate fire suppression pumps and insufficient exits for the workers. Once you called an emergency and you mustered everybody in the living quarters, there was no way for people to get out of there. In the new designs, they actually have shielded stairwells and tunnels and pathways where there's multiple ways out of the living quarters to get you down to a safe refuge and to your lifeboat stations. This engineering disaster forever changed the way offshore platforms operate. For those who design and work on these mighty structures, there is no more potent reminder of what can go wrong than the name Piper Alpha.